Hello everyone, welcome back. And today I want to talk about predatory monetization in gaming. Now this has been a bit of a hot topic recently with the release of Diablo Immortal and people discussing the idea that you can spend over $100,000 in that game and still not be fully geared. Now, I don't know about the truth of those claims, but either way, people are noticing that the game has a very predatory style of monetizing itself. It wants to kind of rope you in and keep you spending. Today, I don't want to talk about those strategies because I feel like the psychology and the strategies of gaming monetization have been talked about a lot. There's plenty of videos out there about loot boxes and gambling and interval ratios, these sorts of things. Today, I want to talk about what you as a consumer can do to protect yourself from predatory monetization tactics. How can you recognize when a game is trying to get you in and get you addicted to spending and what can you do to avoid that? Let's get into it. The first thing we need to discuss is the idea that they want to turn people into gamblers and addicts and spenders as early as possible and as young as possible. The age group of 18 to 24 is the most likely to engage in risky behaviors such as gambling or spending money in an irresponsible way like on games. So a lot of the times these companies are going to be targeting you if you're between the age of, I would say even 15 to 24 really. So why is this age group more vulnerable? Why is this age group more likely to spend on games in a way that is not responsible? Well, there are a few different factors here. The first being that your brain is not fully developed at this point. The part of your brain that is responsible for decision making and, you know, risk analysis, these sorts of things, isn't kind of all the way there just yet. Our brains don't finish developing until about 25 years old. And that's kind of when the drop off for those things is going to happen. And that's something that you can even see with like crime, for example, the difference in crime between the age group of 18 to 25 is quite drastic because by the age of 25, people have recognized the risk associated with their actions and they're more easily able to kind of tell when something is going to be a bad idea. So if you're in that age group, they're specifically targeting you because your brain is not going to be thinking about all the risks associated with you spending money in a way that is not completely responsible. Another important factor is going to be economic independence. How many gamers out there, maybe above 25, kind of resonate with the story I'm about to tell you? Let's say you're 18 years old, you recently graduated high school, and you got your first job. You're living at home maybe for a year or two after you initially graduate high school because, you know, rent is expensive. And if you live in America, there's no way you're going to be moving out living on your own. So you live with your parents. Suddenly, you have your own job and you're most likely not paying rent. Or if you are paying rent, it's probably not going to be too much because it's your parents or family, something along those lines. So now you have a large amount of disposable income and you're also playing video games and you don't have to pay rent and you have this economic independence that you didn't have before. If you want something in a video game, you can just buy it. No one's going to stop you. No one's going to tell you no, because you know, you made that paycheck. It's your money. And also you don't have anything else significant that you're putting that money towards. That is going to be the profile for a lot of 18 year olds in America and, you know, many other countries as well. But specifically, I think this is going to be what happens in America because this is kind of the common trajectory that we see young adults go is that they graduate from high school, they get a job immediately and they're living at home. And all of these factors in combination is what creates the kind of perfect person to become an addict or a spender when it comes to video games. So we know that the age group of 18 to 24 is the most vulnerable when it comes to these predatory practices. But what can the average person do to avoid being caught in this spider's web? What can the average person do to not feel like they're being preyed upon when it comes to playing their favorite games? Well, there's a few ways that we need to talk about this and a few angles that we can take it from. The first thing that I think is important to recognize is whether or not your behavior or your spending is problematic. Essentially, is it addictive behavior or is it kind of within your means or something that's not out of control? So spending $10 every now and then on your favorite game to buy a skin or something is not really that big of a deal. You know, if you play League of Legends, you spend $20 on a skin, not the end of the world, right? But if you're spending over and over again and you can't stop yourself from spending, that's when it becomes an issue. That's when it becomes what's known as, you know, a disorder or an addiction. In psychology and, you know, clinical psychology, disorders and addictions are specifically defined by whether or not they cause impairment or dysfunction in somebody's life. So essentially, is your normal healthy life being disrupted because of this behavior? If that's the case, that's when you have a disorder. If you can't stop yourself from spending to the point where you can't afford to pay your bills, that's really when it's an issue compared to someone who maybe 
has a little bit of disposable income and can spend, and they know that what they're spending isn't going to impact them in a negative way. One extremely effective and simple way to get out of these habits of spending kind of without even thinking about it, you know, just putting in the card and spending money is to set yourself either a weekly or monthly limit when it comes to your spending on these games. If you're somebody who's really passionate about a game you're playing and you want to spend money, you need to kind of budget and recognize, okay, this is the amount of money that I can spend on this game without it becoming problematic. And then I'm going to limit it to this much. So, you know, if I want to buy some Apex Legends loot packs or Apex packs, then I can buy this many a week or I can spend this much money a week on these things. And then you're not going to go over that limit because once you start to go over that limit and you just say, ah, well, I'll just get one more. You don't get the thing you want. And then you go, okay, maybe just one more. And then you just keep spending and spending and spending. That's when you find yourself wasting $300, $400 trying to get this one thing you wanted and you're not going to get it. That's the problem with problematic spending. And that's why they call it problematic spending is because you can't stop yourself from continuing to do it even if you wanted to. So really setting aside that kind of budget for yourself can be something that's really helpful as the average person. Some of you might be thinking to yourselves, well, I shouldn't have to protect myself from the predatory monetization practices of gaming companies and their negative use of psychology. And I completely agree. In an ideal world, I wouldn't need to be making this video and, you know, game companies would just be moral and they would sell you a product that you could buy. But unfortunately, we don't exist in that world, or at least many of us in the world don't. There are some countries where things like loot boxes are banned. But for many of us, this is not the case. And while we exist within this time and within these conditions, we have to learn how to protect ourselves from the negative use of psychology that these gaming companies want to impose on us. So if you want to avoid negative spending practices in games and you don't want to feel like you're getting preyed upon, the first thing that you should always be looking for when you approach a game is does this game have a spending loop? And a spending loop is when you spend money and that is usually going to lead you to spend more money. This is differentiated from games that don't have a spending loop and that games without a spending loop, you are paying typically for a product and that product is kind of singular. It's something that isn't going to need you to spend again to get enjoyment out of it. A great example of a game that doesn't have spending loops in the same way is going to be League of Legends. I give them money for a skin. I get the skin. That's the end of the transaction. I don't have to worry about not having the skin later on or something happening to the skin or it's not going to impact my progression in the game. Games with heavy spending loops are typically going to be Korean styled games like Black Desert Online or Maple Story or Lost Ark. These are the styles of games that want you to spend so then you can spend more and it's going to limit your fun and progression through that spending. So while you still can achieve everything in the game by being free to play, you're going to spend much, much, much less time if you do spend. And as you spend more as you get stronger you are then required to spend even more to get to the higher tiers as your chances of success or growth lower so i believe the way it works in lost ark is kind of like and i know it works like this in maple story is as you kind of gamble your way up to higher levels of gear in these games your chances of success get lower and therefore you need to spend more of the currency to kind of get you more chances at trying or maybe even sometimes these items can help increase your chances of the success. So if the game wants you to get into a loop of spending and spending and spending with giving you failure as a possible outcome that can cause you to spend more because of that failure, that is an immediate red flag and that you should maybe avoid this game if you're somebody who has problematic behaviors. Because that failure aspect is really what causes people to spend more. If you're upgrading gear and then you fail, but you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm one away from max. You're just going to keep spending and spending and spending. You're not getting a guaranteed outcome from your spending. You are getting the chance at something. And that is what creates the spending loop. And that is the thing that you should really try to avoid if you're somebody who is trying to avoid predatory monetization practices. Another piece of advice that I can give is that you can have an accountability buddy. So this is the person who you're going to go to before you make any of these purchases. And they're just somebody that you kind of agree with beforehand. Hey, I'm trying to maybe reduce my spending in video games or, hey, I maybe want to make sure that I'm not spending money on something ridiculous. I just want to let you know before I spend something and then maybe you can give me your opinion on that. And then having somebody who's going to treat that situation fairly can be good for you. 
For example, if you go to a friend and you say, hey, I haven't spent money on a game in a while. I'm just going to drop $15 on this. They can be the person, the voice of reason in your head to go, great. You know, I think that's fine. You've been doing really good for yourself. But if you go to them and you say, hey, I'm going to spend $10 and then you fail your upgrade and then you go, okay, I'm going to spend another $10. That's going to be the person that says, hold on, stop. Let's think about this situation for a second. What are you feeling right now? What are you thinking right now? Is this really how you want to spend your money? Is this a wise decision? And just having that other person to reflect on before you make that decision can kind of reduce all the crazy brain chemicals in your head by making you kind of stop and process what's going on. Mindfulness is a huge thing in psychology when it comes to breaking addictions and bad behaviors and kind of developing habits that you want to keep. Essentially becoming aware of what you're thinking and feeling in the moment and having someone else there to help you with that can be a huge benefit because you're having this other person say, no, wait, stop, look into yourself, think about this. Is this a good decision? So get an accountability buddy if you're someone who maybe wants to avoid this style of negative spending and gaming. And it doesn't mean you need to have someone who's like babysitting you. It just means having someone there who can keep you in check when it comes to spending too much. My final piece of advice is to recognize that if you do make a mistake and you find yourself spending more money than you intended, that relapses happen, mistakes happen, and that is okay. And it's okay to occasionally make mistakes, but if they do happen, stop digging. Do your best to get out of the hole instead of just saying, well, I'm already down here, might as well just keep digging and make the problem worse, keep spending money. Might as well go for it. I've already spent 100. Might as well spend 500. The sunk cost fallacy is another huge way that these companies get you because they want you to spend money. And then if you don't get what you want, then they're going to get you to keep spending money. And if you at any point feel regret over your spending when it comes to these styles of games, that's the point when you need to stop and recognize maybe this isn't a good style of monetization for me. Maybe this game is not a good fit for me if I feel like I need to spend money or if I'm feeling regret because of my purchases within a game. So that's my my last big piece of advice. Recognize that it is okay to occasionally slip up and spend more than you meant to, but don't keep digging if that is the situation. Do your best to recognize that mistake and grow from it. Mm -hmm.